Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor disaster. What happened? The Fukushima Daiichi reactor is located in the Fukushima prefecture of Japan. Japan itself is situated at the conjunction of four tectonic plates and is seismically and volcanically active. On March 11, 2011, Japan was hit with a magnitude 9.0 earthquake. To put this in perspective, the largest earthquake ever recorded registered 9.5 on the Richter scale and occurred in Chile in 1960. The Japan earthquake in 2011 was so powerful that it moved the entire country of Japan several meters to the east. Shortly after the earthquake, the Fukushima Daiichi reactor site was hit with a 15 meter tsunami. It flooded the site and drown out the backup diesel generators that were powering the cooling system and heat exchangers for the reactors. Shortly afterwards, this event precipitated an evacuation order for two kilometers around the site. By March 12th, this was extended to 20 kilometers around the site. Over the course of the next three days, the remaining emergency cooling procedures failed. Reactors 1 through 3 continued to produce steam and gases, and pressure in the reactors began to rise. By the afternoon of March 12th, the nuclear fuel had melted through the pressure containment vessel into the concrete below. Hydrogen gas that had accumulated on the service floor above ignited, and the building exploded. Over the next two days, reactors 2 and 3 suffered hydrogen explosions as well. Why did it happen? 18 years prior to the tsunami, TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, operators of the Fukushima Daiichi plant, received information that a 15.7 meter tsunami was possible in the area. But neither TEPCO nor the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency, NISA, did anything about it. The Fukushima plant was designed in 1960 and took into account the 1960 earthquake in Chile. As a result, the plant was built 10 meters above sea level, with seawater pumps situated 4 meters above sea level. The Fukushima plant was designed to handle a 3.1 meter tsunami. In retrospect, the pumps should have been placed further uphill. Buildings should have been sealed against water, and backup pumps for the primary seawater pumps should have been installed. The impact of the Fukushima Daiichi disaster. The tsunami and the earthquake took at least 20,000 lives and 2,500 more people were missing. During the evacuation, 300,000 people relocated from their homes. Many thought that they would return home in a few days. Radiation also contaminated the groundwater of the area. The primary health concern for people is an increased cancer rate for those exposed to radioactive material. But mortality estimates vary widely and range up to 10,000 deaths. 80% of the radioactive material ended up in the Pacific Ocean. The effects of this remain poorly studied and are largely unknown. An animal's position in the food chain, where they live in the water column, and their migratory patterns determine how much radioactive material they encounter. At this time, no population level effects of radiation have been observed in the marine wildlife surrounding Japan. However, Two of the cesium isotopes, cesium-134 and cesium-137, have been detected in bluefin tuna caught in the eastern Pacific off the coast of California. The long half-life of these cesium isotopes presents a unique opportunity to study natural processes such as ocean mixing and animal migration. This leaves us with the question of what we can do. We can make sure we build nuclear reactors in areas that are not prone to tsunamis, we can limit our consumption of tuna and other fish stocks that are vulnerable to overfishing to offset the negative effects of radiation poisoning. We can write letters to our congressional representatives expressing our concern about possible nuclear fallout, and if we live in areas that are seismically active and receive power from a nuclear power plant, you can move. Thank you for watching our presentation on the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor disaster.